19, I think about in the 19, late 70s, I saw a movie called Endless Summer that depicted some young California kids with their surfboards traveling the world looking for the endless uh, summer, no winter, and the perfect wave. It captured my heart and I thought, well, that's me. for two years through Australia, Southeast Asia, uh, Bali, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, and ended up sailing down to a small island called Mauritius. And this island had great surf and great diving. I surfed there, dived there, lived with the local Creole fishermen, Simon and Danielle de Dune, in a place called Tamarin Bay. Are we going diving tonight? Diving tonight? Yeah. Oh, the weather doesn't look so good. That's good. Okay. As we rode down there, you could see the fluorescence in the water. You know, you lift the water up and the fluorescence is sparkling. Beautiful night. And we came down to Riviere Noir, which is on the outer reef, and dropped in. And we started um, getting crayfish. If this is the best you can do, I'm going back to New Zealand. Hey, 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 don't make this, man. You feel? We will wake up the shark. <laughs> no worries, mate. It was quite dark because the clouds were coming in, so there was no real moonlight, and there's a little bit of a chop on the water. diving uh, on the island, they taught me to night dive. We used to dive on the outer reef. And as we dived, we'd, we'd look with our diving torches because the crabs and the crayfish would come out. And with your torchlight, you could blind them. And with your leather gloves, just pick them up.
So I looked around the water and started making out these jellyfish, box-shaped, thing of like tentacles. I thought, well, is that, a, is that a jellyfish? Yeah, it must be. So I reached out, and sure enough, it was a jelly. As I swam through, I had no idea that I'd just reached out and grabbed potentially the deadliest, some say the second deadliest creature known to man, a box jellyfish, obviously, because it's box-shaped. But it's transparent, bell-shaped, with cube, like a cube underneath the bell, with finger-like tentacles coming out. I actually thought it was like a transparent cuttlefish, or uh, it was a very unusual looking jellyfish. Something smashed in the arm and stung me. And it felt like thousands of volts of electricity went through my arms. It literally shook me in the water. As I swam towards them, I started getting stung by more. Oh, it got hit a fourth time. paralyzed, trailing the water, got hit with the fifth one. As I felt that, I thought to myself, what on earth have you done to deserve this kind of punishment or payback? I had a flood of memories of stuff that had done wrong in my life. And here I am thinking, well, there's no use thinking about that, whether I deserve it or not, I'm dying. I better keep my head together here. As the young boy's pulling me through the lagoon, I'm sitting there as calm as possible, but I feel the poison move into my kidneys like someone stuck their fist into my back as the poison continue to move down the right-hand side of my body. As I hit the beach, the young boy motions for me to get out. I take one step forward and my right leg crumples underneath me and I realise the poison has already numbed or paralysed the right-hand side of my body. And this young kid carried me up across the sandy beach, which is really hard. Amen. Amen. Uh, man. Uh, yeah. Amen. Uh, man, uh, man. Uh, yeah. Amen. 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 I just lay down on the ground and I started to feel very weak and tired. I feel my eyes beginning to shut and as my eyes begin to close, I hear a voice speak to me. It says, son, if you close your eyes, you shall never awake again. I said, what? Who said that?
As I looked to my right, I expected to see a man standing next to me, but there was no one there. That's bizarre. But I knew I'd heard a voice speak to me. Close your eyes, you'll never awake again. But that means you'll die. What are you doing trying to go to sleep here, you idiot? This is a coma, you can't afford to sleep, you need any serum, any toxins. See, I intellectually knew this as a lifeguard, but here I am confronted with the fact that this poison is just taking me out. And I'm unaware that I'm on the edge of potential coma and I believe certain death. So I stood up, fought off the, 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 the death that was coming on me as best I could and found my left leg was still strong enough to support my weight. leg as a crutch and put my weight onto the left hand side of my body and hobble down the road looking for help. If you close your eyes, you shall never awake again. How's the clients? Are they done yet? <laughs> hey, look at this guy. Oh, drunk surfer again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, help me. Oh, please, please take me to a hospital. You got money? Yeah. Yeah. I'll pay. How much you got? Fifty. A hundred US. Anything. <laughs> uh, you guys drink too much. Crazy. As they walked away lighting up a cigarette and just ignoring me, I heard this voice speak to me again. It said, son, are you willing to beg for your life? Please. 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 How much you got on you? I will pay. I will pay you. How will you pay me, huh? Don't worry. I'll pay you, I promise. Where do you stay? I stay at a bungalow. Tamarind Bay. Okay. I'll drop you at the Tamarind Bay Hotel. No, wait. Hospital. You've got no money. I'm going to drop you there. No. Please. Get out. Later. Get out. Why Please. you do this to me? Uh. I flew out the door. I couldn't believe what was happening. Please. As I lay there, I could hear the familiar voice of a Creole fisherman from the village, Danielle. Ian. Ian, what's happened? Jellyfish. Jenny, Jenny, fish. Jenny fish. I'll take you to the hotel. Grab me in his arms, he carried me into the hotel. The Chinese owners had closed the bar, and here next to the swimming pool, they're sitting there playing mahjong and drinking their whiskey.
Wait your hand. I'll get an ambulance. Hey, white boy. What's the matter with you? You drunk? No. No, please. A hospital. Please. I need a hospital. A hospital. What's this? Stupid boy. Why you put needles in your arm? What? I'm cold. Please, I'm cold. I need a blanket. I'm cold. These guys think I'm a drug addict and I'm nearly dead. Stupid boy. Stupid boy. A cold. So cold. Help. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Try to take some. Please take me. Please take me in your car. Please take me in your car. No, 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 no. I think you wait for an ambulance, okay? You want my car. I look to why. I knew if I looked at him, I'd lose it. I thought to myself, if I, if I survive this, you're history, Jack. I mean, I was furious. I'm looking away, contemplating what I'm going to do to him if I survive it. And I see Danielle appear from nowhere, runs up to my side. And to my amazement, an ambulance comes flying into the car park. Hurry, hurry, it's a jellyfish. Please, hurry, please. Jellyfish? Careful with it. It's all right, it's all right, Jim. It's all right. Don't worry, don't worry. You'll be all right. As we race towards the hospital, I start to see on the inside of the ambulance what appears to be a small boy with white hair. I see sections of some kid's life with snow white hair. I then realize as I'm looking at it that this is me. This is sections of my own personal life. I thought, am I that close? With my mind, I did a mental check, you know what I mean? Of my own vital signs. My mind told me I am very close to death. As I'm lying there, I think, well, I, I could be that close to death. I may not make it. Well, I'm lying there having no idea what to do next, and I see appear before me a clear vision of my mother. She looked straight up into my eyes. She said these words. She said, Ian, no matter what you've done in your life, son, no matter how far from God you may be, if you'll but call out to God from your heart, God will hear you, and God will forgive you, son. I thought, well, if there is a God, which one? I'd seen thousands. I'd travelled through Kandy, Sri Lanka, been through Bora Batur. I'd been to so many different places. And I'm lying there thinking, okay, God, if you're real, show yourself. I used to say, well, unless I see God, I won't believe. Well, I lay there, I'm going, show yourself and I'll pray. No face appeared. My mother kept saying, pray from your heart. God, if, you, if you're real, this is real. Help me to pray. Help me to pray the only prayer I've ever learnt. Help me to remember the Lord's Prayer. As I said that, words began to appear before my eyes. Forgive us our trespasses and sins. I thought, how on earth could God forgive me? I mean, it's too late. I've done too many things wrong. God. God, if you are real, and you can hear me, please forgive me.
more words appeared. Forgive those who have trespassed and sinned against you. After that means forgive other people. I can do that. I'm not a vindictive person by nature. God, I can forgive anyone. No matter what people have done to me, I forgive those that have sinned against me. As I said that, the face of the Indian taxi driver appeared in front of me. I thought, what on earth is this man doing here? The voice said, will you forgive this man for pushing you out of his taxi tonight and leaving you for dead on the side of the road? I thought, no, you must be joking. Not forgiving him. I mean, I was furious with that guy. And the next minute, the Chinese guy's face appeared in front of me. I thought, what on earth is he doing here? And the voice said, will you forgive this man for not taking you in his car tonight and leaving you to die in the hotel? I thought, no. As I saw both of these men's faces, I thought, what on earth is going on? This isn't just some mumbo-jumbo prayer. I could actually be talking to someone who could be God. This voice is actually personalizing this prayer to me. to me. <sighs> Their faces instantly disappeared. The next words came, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I thought, Thy will? I've led my own will. So I said, God, I need to know your will, but if you can help me through this, I'll seek it out. I'll find it and I'll follow you. I'll honour you all the days of my life. As I said that, the entire Lord's Prayer appeared before me, and for the first time in life, I had total revelation of what it meant. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. And as I lay there, I felt an amazing peace settle upon me. I knew somehow, deep in my heart, that prayer had changed from something that I did, like repetitious stand up, sit down and kneel type thing through the liturgy. It had changed dramatically, and that I actually prayed for my inner man. What happened? What's wrong with him? Stone. Jelly. Jelly? Jelly. Sir, Sir, can you hear me? Or do you get the antitoxins ready? Sir, Sir, can you hear me? Get the antitoxins ready! Doctor, I, I can't find a vein. Slap his hand. Come on, take it like this. Slap his hand. That's all we can do for you right now. Fight the poison. Fight the poison, okay? And I could feel myself going. It was, it was really scary. You could hear everything. Well, I lay there and I had doctors milling around me and nurses and orderlies, but I found it so difficult to keep my eyes open. I just couldn't seem to keep my eyes open. I remember shutting them and sighing a sigh of relief and thought I'll have a break for a few moments and then I'll try again. As I did that, I felt a sensation like a release. The battle to stay alive had finished.
I suddenly found myself in a standing upright position wide awake. I knew I was awake. The trouble was, it was pitch black. And my first thought was, why on earth those doctors can't turn the lights out in here? What kind of hospital is this? As I stood there, wondering how long I'd been asleep for and why the lights were out, I thought, well, don't freak out. Let your eyes accustomed to the dark. Maybe you've woken up too quick. So I kept looking, thinking my pupils had dilated. No light. Couldn't see a thing. It was pitch black, like a dark room. So, well, well, OK. There must be some light in here somewhere. So I turned around 360 degrees, checking out to see if there's some light. Couldn't see a thing. As I went out to my right, I couldn't find the wall. I thought, that's weird. Have they moved me? So I started moving back to the left, groping around looking for my bed. Couldn't find it. I thought, great, you idiot, now you've lost your bed. How on earth did you do that? So as I'm groping around physically trying to find my bed, the next thought that comes into my mind is that it's so dark in here, you can't seem to see your hand in front of your face. So I brought my hand up to where my face should be, and it seemed to pass straight through, as if there was no physical form there. I thought, that's impossible. You can't miss your head. I went for my physical body, absolutely nothing. I thought, what the heck's going on? It's like I'm out of my physical form. It's like I'm transparent, yet I have the uh, sensation of being a total human being standing here. Ian, who I am, appears to be standing here. What's happened? And as I stood there, I began to sense something on the, out to my right looking at me. In front of me, I felt like invisible eyes or something or someone checking me out. The darkness had an evil presence, a cold, encroaching evil pervading the atmosphere. Where? Where am I? Shut up. You deserve to be here. What? Des deserve to be where? Hell. Now shut up. As I stood there, realizing I could actually be in hell. A radiant beam of light pierced through the darkness above me. As this light touched my face, I felt an awesome presence go through me, and my entire body seemed to lift off the ground and be translated up into this light and radiance. As I've been drawn up into it, I can see that it's coming from a circular shape opening far above me. I feel like a speck of dust being drawn towards this light. As I'm being drawn up towards it, I thought, is this real? I look back over my shoulder and far beneath me, I could see the darkness. Still not understanding what this light was, I began to move up to the opening, enter it. As I was drawn into the opening, I could now see that it was a tunnel. As I looked along the length of it, I could see the, the source of the radiance. My first thought is the center of the universe. Look at the light. Look at the power coming from there. As I've been moved towards it, I watch as a wave of radiance comes up. As this wave of light comes off the source, it touches me, and I feel warmth, comfort. All that kind of fear and darkness just seems to go out of me, and I feel a living light go through me. Shafts of radiance came out from the central core. It was like a white fire. Phenomenal radiance in the central core. From that, I watched this brilliant light piercing out. I thought even the stars in the universe, even the constellations, must find their energy source from this focal point. What is that light? Is there someone in there, surrounded by this radiance? As I questioned that in my own mind, a voice spoke to me from the center of the light. The moment I hear his voice, I recognize it to be the same voice that spoke to me in the ambulance, telling me to the Lord's Prayer and whether I'd, whether I'd forgive. And he said, Ian, do you wish to return? If you wish to return, you must see in a new light. Words appeared in front of my eyes. God is light. 
and in him there is no darkness at all. I thought, God is light. Could that possibly be God? And in him there's no darkness at all. I've just come from darkness. Whoever this being is, he is completely separate from darkness. I see no shadow. I see no evil. Only pure white radiance. And he knows my name. Could it possibly be God that I'm standing in the presence of, talking to? I thought if it is, he must be able to see my spirit absolutely naked. He must see everything. I began to pull back. As I began to pull back towards the darkness of the tunnel, I watched a wave of radiance come off him. I expected it to touch me and literally catapult me back into the pit. But as this wave of light emanated forth off him, it moved through me, and all I got was love. The love was causing me to literally blubber. I was actually just bawling my eyes out. That I could feel an acceptance coming. I said, God, you can't love me. I've cursed you, more love. I said, oh, I've committed all kinds of sins. I've slipped around, I've taken drugs, more. As the love kept coming, I then literally divulged the, what I knew to be the most debauched things in my life. As the light began to open up, I became aware that, that standing in the center, I began to make out a man's bare feet Around his ankles were dazzling white robes, garments, not garments of cloth, but garments of light. As I looked out and saw that, I began to lift my face up to see the chest of the man and, and his arms are outstretched with dazzling white robes as if to welcome me. As I looked, I knew that I was looking upon God. S such... You're just awestruck. You, you can't be prepared. You have no way you can be prepared to see this. You just, I stood in absolute amazement. And as I looked towards his head, his hair was white radiance. I, out of his face, appeared to be light billowing forth, literally permeating out of like the, his entire face. You couldn't see the features of his face because the light was seven to ten times brighter than all the light I'd seen, and it was literally um, uh, emanating forth from his face. I began walking closer towards him. I wondered if I could just see his face. I'll know who God is. As I got within a few feet of his presence, I began to place my face into the light. As my, and it didn't hurt your eyes. It was like you could look into it. As I placed my face closer in towards his face, hoping I'd break through that veil, as my face did, he suddenly moved. I saw an opening in a circular shape like a window into eternity or a door into eternity. As I looked through this, I could see an entire new earth open up before me. It was like I was standing on the threshold of eternity and I was getting a glimpse into it. As I'm looking, I can see grass with the same light and life emanating forth from it. I can see flowers, fields. I knew if I stepped on the grass, it would not damage it. The color and the energy and the life emanating from it. I, it was amazing. I see a, ri a river or a crystal clear stream, trees along its banks, rolling hills to the left. I look out to my right, mountains in the distance, blue, blue sky, crystal clear. I'm standing there and I'm going, this is paradise. As I'm looking, I know that I belong here. It's like I knew I had been created by God to live here. I thought, why wasn't I born here in the first place? Why was I born on this earth? I knew I'd come home. I knew I'd travel the world looking for that paradise. And here it was in front of me. I thought, I'm home. I'm home. As I started to move in, his presence came right back in front of me and blocked the way. He asked me this question, he said, Ian, now that you've seen, do you wish to go in or do you wish to return? God, I'm not married. I've got no children. There's nothing for me to return back for. I don't want to go back.
As I look back, to my amazement, God showed me one person that had loved me. The moment I saw my mother directly behind me, I wept. I thought, I've just not only lied to God, but there is someone who loved me. And I thought, if I'm dead, and this is actually happening, and I step through into paradise, into the presence of God, will my dear mother have any idea that her heathenistic son prayed in that ambulance, repented of his sins, gave his life over to God, and God heard this young man and caught him up into paradise? I thought, my mother will think her son went to hell. I thought she'd get a, a telegram or a telex saying, your son died last night. Would you like him ship time in a box or a jar of ashes? I thought if that happens, it could destroy her. She's suffered so much, she's lost her family. And I thought, near I, her, how selfish would it be for me to step through and leave my mother to bury me and think I went to hell? I want to go back. I was instantaneously back in my physical form in a hospital with a doctor that had been working on me holding my right foot in the air with a sharp instrument like a scalpel or a knife prodding the base of my foot. I could feel nothing, prodding it like a dead piece of meat. I hear the voice of God interrupt my thought and he said this, son, I have just given your life back. I went, what? I said, I've just seen God. What's happening here? I felt an amazing power go through me. It was like a, a low voltage of electricity. I felt my entire body starting to feel again. And within a few hours, I was completely healed. I said, God, what have I become? He said, you're a reborn Christian. He said, you only came in because your sins have been forgiven and the blood of Jesus covered you. The sacrifice, the atonement of Christ Jesus had covered your sins. You walked into his presence as if you were white as snow. I said, he stepped aside. He said, 2 Peter chapter 3, 10 to 18, God has created a new heaven and a new earth for those who love him. He said, this old earth will pass away. This body will pass away. But God said, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Death, where is your sting? Death is swallowed up. How? Through the power of the resurrection of Jesus. The sting of death is sin, but the free gift of God is of those who repent of their sins, their sins will be forgiven, and they will step through into eternity. To live is Christ, to die is gain. <laughs> Who have I beside you, Lord? And I just went, man, he said, a new earth and a new heaven and a new Jerusalem, the city of our God, shall send out of the new heavens onto the new earth, and there will be no more sickness, no more suffering, no more death, and no more war, and we shall dwell with him throughout all eternity. And there is a river of life flowing from the throne of God, and those who drink from it, it's eternal life. When I had that experience, I came out of the hospital completely healed. I said, God, what's happened to me? He said, Ian, you are a reborn Christian. I said, I've never heard that term before. What does that mean? And he said, you must read a Bible. I remember over the next six weeks in 1982 reading the Bible. As I did, I said, God, what took place? He said, Ian, you are a reborn Christian. And I read it in John 3.3 3, that a man must be born again of the Spirit of God to enter the kingdom of heaven. I said, God, how did that take place? He said, Ian, in that, in that ambulance as you saw your life go before you and you saw your mother praying for you, the words came, forgive us our sins. We forgive those who have sinned against us. 
and we give our heart over to Jesus Christ. He said, when you pray that prayer, I forgave you and cleansed you and washed your spirit as white as snow. So there is a spiritual battle for, for our soul. Kingdom of darkness versus the kingdom of light. And he said, Ian, when you turned your heart over to me, all the darkness was cleansed from your spirit in a moment in time, and the blood of Jesus washed your soul clean. I said, God, I seem to go into darkness. What is that? He said, Ian, there's a kingdom of darkness ruled by Satan, but there is a kingdom of light ruled by Jesus. He said, in the spirit realm, there is a kingdom of darkness, total separation from all light. I said, God, why did you take me through that? He said, Ian, had you not prayed in the ambulance, I'd have left you in outer darkness until the day of judgment. But I chose to show you the valley of the shadow of death, but evil could not touch you because I was with you. I said, God, I moved through a tunnel of light. He said, Matthew 7, um, 13 and 14, narrow is the way that leads to the kingdom of God, few find it. Broad and wide is the pathway that leads to destruction and outer darkness. There is a highway of holiness, the Lord spoke to me. I said, I felt love and joy and peace. He said, my Holy Spirit brings love and joy and peace and comfort to those who love me. I said, God, I saw my arm and it was transparent. He said, Ian, in the twinkling of an eye, your perishable body will go and you'll take on immortality. Death is swallowed up in victory because the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. I said, God, I came into a, a light that seemed to fill the heavens. He said, my son Jesus is glorified. He is surrounded by unapproachable light. I said, then how did I come into that light? He said, the veil has been torn into the Holy of Holies, that we have entry in through the blood of the Lamb into the holy place. I said, I saw a man in white robes and his face shone with a radiance that seemed to fill the universe. He said, that was my son Jesus in his glorified heavenly form. He said, my son died on the cross for your sins, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. But he rose again from the dead and he is, he is glorified. I said, where is that mentioned in the Bible? He said, in Revelations 1, 13 to 18, in the midst of the Lamb stands, stood the Son of Man, with white robes reaching his feet. His head and his hair were white like wool, like snow, and his face shone like the sun in full strength. He said, do not be afraid. I was dead on the cross, but behold, I am alive forevermore. I hold the keys of death and Hades. I have conquered over the power of evil. I am the resurrected Yeshua, Hamashiach, the Messiah. I said, that's Jesus. I said, he stepped aside. He said, John 10, 7 and 9. Jesus said, I am the door of life. Those who come to me shall have life, life eternal, abundant life, resurrection life. And I said, God, I saw green pastures. He said, a new heaven and a new earth for those who love me. He said, son, I've created a new heaven and a new earth. It's 2 Peter chapter 3, 10 to 18. He said, I saw people behind me. He said, I wish that none would perish. Do you realize that tonight he desires you to come to know him? His arms of love, which were stretched out on the cross, so great a love had God that he died on the cross for you. That his heart is that he wishes none of you would perish. That every single one of you, every person, no matter how broken, no matter how smashed, no matter how abused, can be forgiven and healed. The Spirit of the Lord is upon Jesus to heal the broken hearts, to set captives free from every bondage, every sin that comes, he can set you free. Purify your heart and fill you with life eternal. Many of you are living for the moment. You've pressed the self-destruct button years ago. But I tell you what, I had a praying mother who never gave up. And some of you have got family, grandparents who have prayed for you. And the heart of God is for you to respond to that act of love for you to humble yourself like prodigal sons and daughters and come back into the house of the Lord, to come back and find forgiveness, to find healing in Jesus Christ. I said, God, I came back into my body. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He said, I can speak to that which is dead and call it back to life. He said, son, if you come to me, you will have the resurrection power dwelling within you. And when you die, I will take your human spirit into heaven. He said, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. He said on the cross when Jesus hung there, he said, Father, forgive them. A man next to him was a murderer and a thief. He said, remember me. The other man cursed him. Jesus turned to the man and said, today you shall be with me in paradise. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord Jesus Christ. Death is swallowed up 
through the power of his blood. All I know is that he loves me. I've had 19 years of experience in the tangible presence of the Spirit of God. He has completely healed and set me free. God has given me a great, great wife, an amazing family, and I have hope for the future. And I know, no matter how suicidal or how much despair is in your heart, no matter how much your marriage is smashed, we've heard folks here this evening say that only through prayer and forgiveness can your marriage be healed. No matter how much people have rejected you and, and, and crushed you, God loves and will bring you back up into a place of wholeness and a place of life itself. Jesus is the life of the world. I'd like you just to open your heart up tonight and to really pray. Seek the face of God. I prayed in an ambulance on, on, my, on my deathbed and gave my life to Jesus. He hears the cry of a man's heart. Any man, woman or child would say, Lord, come into my heart. Forgive me. Have mercy upon me. He will do that. All I know is that God is out there in a, in a tangible way reaching out to you with his love, with his, his nail-pierced hands and saying, come back. Come back home. Come and dwell in the house of the Lord forevermore. I'd like to pray with you, and I'd like to pray a prayer that if you can make it your own, if you can actually call out to God from your own heart, he will come into your life, and you will be born again. Jesus says that those who call upon his name shall be saved, that nothing but the blood of Jesus can cleanse you from all your sins. Many people have seen this tunnel of light, but very few people have stepped through to see that it's Jesus in the center. I said, God, some people don't even believe that it's you. I said, why is that? He said, because Lucifer can come as an angel of light and deceive even the elect, deceive people away from the true light. Scriptures say that Jesus is the true light that came into the world to enlighten every heart. That he is that bright shining star, that he is Elohim, he is Yeshua, he is Emmanuel, God with us. He is Jehovah the Lord God Almighty. People said, oh, I want to pray to God, but I don't believe in Jesus. Jesus said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The scriptures clearly teach in Colossians that Jesus is the visible representation of the invisible God. That he, when you've seen Christ, you've actually seen God incarnate on this earth. Jesus said, not only am I God, but I will die and rise again from the dead. He prophesied his death, and after three days, he rose again. He is glorified, surrounded by light. And it says the glory that surrounds Jesus will fill the new heavens and the new earth. You will not need the light of the sun or the light of the moon because the light and glory that shines forth from the Son of God shall fill the heavens with his radiance. It's amazing to have him in your heart. If you receive him tonight, the darkness will be removed and the life and light of Jesus Christ will come out. Let's pray. If you want to join with me right where you are, I'd like you just to bow your head in an act of humility and open your heart because those who call upon the name of the Lord from their heart shall be saved. I'd like you to say, Lord Jesus, I humble myself before you tonight. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I believe that you died on the cross for me and that nothing but your blood can cleanse me of all my sins. And God, as you forgive me this night of everything that I've done wrong in my life, I choose to forgive those who have sinned against me. I choose to forgive those who have abused me, those that have hurt me, and I choose to surrender my heart over to the light of the world, Jesus Christ. I believe not only did he die for my sins, but he has truly risen from the dead. And I come before him with a heart of humility, a heart of of honesty, a heart of transparency, and say, Jesus, be my Lord, be my Savior, be my Prince, my King, and let your resurrection power, the power of your Holy Spirit, enter my temple, my vessel, this day. I choose to walk in the light of your holiness, the light of your truth, from this night on, all the days of my life. I pray this in Jesus' precious name. If you've prayed that prayer with me, please call the number on the screen. We can try and help you.
The Bible says that any man that is in Jesus Christ is a new creation. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Jesus said, I'll give you a new heart, a new spirit within you. I will dwell in your hearts through faith. God has set eternity in our hearts, and all, all of us want to live beyond death. And the only way we can do that is through a relationship with Jesus Christ. It starts right now. You can survive death and go through into eternal life through Jesus Christ. Please call the number so that we might pray with you and that we might be able to help you find a church that could be right for you in your area. A place where you can worship God and encourage others and make friends and be part of the family of Christ. God bless.